we're getting set up. I just want to quickly check on a few things. A few. Okay. Um, I have only 20 minutes, <coughs> and 20 minutes is a really short time to change the world. So what I really am hoping from you is instant feedback and instant support. So when I look at you, you're like nodding or listening or you know not agreeing or agreeing or something like that. So one way, that's great, that's awesome. That's, that's the look of the air. So one way to do that is to just flash your hand, okay? If you hear anything that I say, or anybody else says, and if you agree to that, just flash your hand. Can we just try that again? Three, two, one, just flash your hand. Perfect, instant feedback. So I know you're listening, and I know that you probably agree to something that somebody is saying. Um, let's try that again, flash your hand. It's okay, flash your hand. Okay, good, so we all know how to flash our hands. We are now talking about Project Rise. Project Rise is exactly my idea of what Sangeeta Manan was talking about, okay? Sangeeta Manan beautifully spoke about the principles of professional development. Agree, Nobody agrees, nobody agrees. Oh yeah, they all agree, okay, okay. So she beautifully put together that, you know, these are the principles, this is what we need to do, this is how we need to do, etc., etc. And I'm so glad because this is the perfect opportunity for me to present a tool or a strategy or a method to you, especially after this, and to see, does it fit? So maybe this is just action research. Maybe this is just me presenting to peers my way of doing it in my school. And then maybe you can look at it from the lens of what Madam was talking to us about 10 minutes ago. Okay, agree, disagree. Thank you so much. Project RISE stands for Real Improvement Support for Educators. Real, it's improvement, it's support, and it's for educators. It could be for anybody, okay? It need not be for educators. Can I go ahead and run it in? If I can go ahead. Okay, good. Now, as a teacher, I remember Sangeeta Madam saying that she spent more than 75% of her mind share was always about how do I work with teachers and make them better. CTD was on her mind, right? The same way there were questions in my mind. How can I make teacher training and development enjoyable for my teachers? Not a drag. Enjoyable, they're having fun, right? How can I improve my teachers overall? How can I give them more meaning and purpose in life? So many of my teachers come at the age of 22, 23, just out of college, and really they're looking for some sort of purpose. They're looking for something to do. Rick Warren says, the purpose of life is a life of purpose. Uh, and so you know, very beautifully said, teaching or a teacher is an institution by itself. Let that institution have purpose. And as school leaders, it's our responsibility to instill or create an environment for teachers to find that purpose and that calling. How can I transform their lives? They cannot be transformational people for the children or for Generation Z if they themselves are not learning, growing, and evolving. Obviously, nobody agrees to that, right? Okay. 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 Now, how can I ensure that my children get the most, especially because my school works for the least? We run a school, especially for the urban poor. So our fees is less than 1,000 rupees a month, and we try and give them the most that we can in that. And most importantly, how can I, as a school leader, afford it? Because if it's not affordable, I can't do it. All right, can I move on? Yes. Okay, thanks. So let's start using observations or elevation, not elimination. I heard Brian say, or I heard somebody say that if you want to take a teacher out, or if there is an observation happening in a class, it's probably because there's a problem, right? Let's start using observation for elevation, to elevate the teacher, make her better, not just for elimination. Let's start creating a culture of continuous and never-ending improvement. Am I better than yesterday, boss? Am I better than yesterday? 
is this talk? Yesterday I gave a talk to 35 school principals. I'm holding myself accountable and saying, is this talk today better than yesterday? And do I know how? That's it. Right? Continuous and never ending improvement. That creates the growth mindset in children. And that's what you want to do. Quick note, I strongly recommend you read the book by Carol Dweck, C-A-R-O-L, D-W-E-C-K, D-W-E-C-K. Uh, Carol Dweck talks about the growth mindset. That's something that you can really read and do a lot of things with. I'm moving forward. Everyone can do with a little bit of coaching, right? Everyone can do with a little bit of coaching. So you've got to start instructional coaching. Every person in this room has problems with their team. Nobody is happy. The, you know, just literally nobody is happy. Everyone thinks that, oh, if only I had better teachers. Oh, if only I had better infrastructure. Oh, if only I had better this. Oh, if only I had better that. Really, but you don't. You have what you have. Do something with it. The reason you are placed there is because you can do something with it. So do it, okay? Start instructional coaching. There is no use of doing any training without observation. It's like making dal or biryani without checking the taste of it, right? Training and observation happens hand in hand. So the principles of Project RISE is action, self-mastery, and relationship. Action. There has to be teacher action. There has to be student action. There has to be management action or school leadership action. Two, it's about self-mastery. Everyone trying to be better, 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 and better. A little bit, incremental change. Three, it's about relationship. It's about, Madam said, when I know why, that's what I want to do. So when the teacher knows that the, the reason why I'm being, I'm being observed is because I am gonna do better, and I am learning better, and I'm developing a better relationship, that's when she loves me, <coughs> observed. So it's about relationship, okay? So these are the promises we make in schools. Well, stock library, efficient bus transport, excellent teachers, etc. This is what all our boards talk about, right? And for all of those things, we have something or the other. We have a librarian or a, or a, or a principal or a lab in charge, etc. But we really have nothing much to show for quality education. What do we really show for quality education? When a parent comes and asks you, do you provide quality education? You're like, oh, okay, this is one of those 20 mark questions. <laughs> Let me be as vague as possible. Okay? Really, we need to be able to have a very crisp and precise way we look at quality education in our schools. Schools are about teaching and learning what is taught and what is caught, right? And if schools are about teachers and students and what they learn and what transpires between them, we got to measure that. Because what gets measured gets done, unfortunately. So we need to measure those parameters. If you just look at a normal school, four divisions, 60 teachers, 2,000 kids, almost 95,000 periods in a year. 95,000 periods in a year, okay? I did the math. Each teacher in a year does around 1,300 periods. 1,300 periods. She goes into a class and she sits there for 40 minutes, 1,300 times a year. 1,300 times a year. If I was manufacturing pressure cookers, imagine if I wasn't doing a quality check on 1,300 pressure cookers that I made. It's crazy, right? So we need to have some systems in place to make sure that we're checking, we're observing, okay? Most of the teachers that I spoke to said they wanted feedback. Everybody wants feedback, a little bit of guidance. So tell me Right, they all want that. But they don't want observation. I do, what do you want me to tell you? Right? I can't tell you anything, right? So, Observations is key, and we were wondering why observation nature came to. And we realized they don't want observation because the discussion after the observation, they don't like. That was demeaning, that was devaluing in some cases. And so they were like, oh, I don't want that, right? So this is what we used to do for almost eight, nine years. We used to put all our teachers together, we put them in a large scale training program room, you know, 100 of them together. And we have a great training program. And a lot of us do that, right? Do you do that? I just want to know. Okay. Be bold. Take a risk. It's a safe place. Good. Excellent. And this is what our teachers used to look like in those training programs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I really, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to create change. 
I did hope my you know the reflector or you know things like that. But I they're probably reflecting on something else. Okay. I'm like, this has to change, right? This has to change. Uh, and that's why we came up with Project Rise. We said no more large scale training like that. That's what Project Rise is about. The Cambridge model of teacher training or classroom observation talks about three steps. The pre-observation meeting, I am going to come to your classroom and I am going to observe one particular aspect. Let me give you one particular aspect that I'm going to observe. It could be the ability to smile. Oh good, that's, that's exactly possible, right? So she gave me a really lovely smile. So I now know that it is possible that she can actually smile and she can actually do that. Now I come to your classroom and I'm gonna observe your ability to smile. Are you comfortable with that? Yes, because I proved the possible. It is something that she can do. Then I go back after the observation to her, which is a post-observation meeting. And what am I talking about? Use Teacher voice, why were you standing there? Right? Do, I, do I talk about that? No. No, you don't shift the goalposts. Correct. You talk about smile. I really saw you smiling so well. That was beautiful. Right? How does the teacher feel now? She doesn't feel cheated. She feels like standard, measurement, discussion. I'm happy. And now I say, you know what? How about moving around the classroom? What do you, what do you think about that? And she's like, yes, I can do that. Come next week, you got the invite. In our school, we do once a week teacher observation. Each teacher is observed once a week. There are like 60 plus teachers, that's 60 plus observations every week, okay? And that's how it becomes coaching. So this is what, it ha this is what the process looks like, exactly what I showed you. So there is teacher voice in training, there is teacher setting the measurement so the teacher knows exactly what the measurement is because it's created. There is one-on-one -on -one and there is one to many. It's all it's all there. So this is what it now looks like in our school on the screens. Small micro training programs once a month, half an hour, one hour. So you get all our teachers together and you say, okay, we're going to teach this new strategy, which we now call a delta. Okay? It's called what? Delta. Delta. Delta because small change. Okay? And this would be like, let's say, circulation in the classroom. I want the teacher to circulate in the classroom because it's good to circulate in the classroom. Okay? So we train that and the teachers then break that down. What does circulation look like? Into five or six parameters. Observable parameters. And you can see that here. So here I've taken an example of of agenda. The teachers decided that agenda is something which is important. So they wrote agenda. They found a video on YouTube about agenda. So they just connected that here. Okay? And then they broke that down into observable parameters here. Right? Agenda is written on the board, check on this thing. Is there an I do? Is there a we do? Is there a you do? Is there a CFU? Is an agenda. These are all done by the teachers. So there's teacher watch, there's teacher ownership. Okay? And we've broken things down to that level. And the teachers do it. Does it cost money? No. Last sentence that Madam said, we ignore the experts in our building. Those experts will rise and shine. They will take care of all that work, right? And then there is a teacher observation that is done in our school. The teacher observation is done like this. There's a supervisor sitting in a corner, picks up a mobile phone, generally playing with it, and walks away. This is what she does. The minute she logs into the mobile phone, she sees her teacher teams, right? These are all her teams of teachers. She then sees which teacher was present for which training program. Because if I and you had a conversation about smiling, I will not hold her accountable for smiling. I cannot hold him accountable for smiling. Right? Unless I have a conversation with them. So this is a knowledge management program. Give people what they need, not what you think they need. Right? Or maybe. Okay. But maintain equity, not equality. Okay? And then on the mobile app, immediately they say we are checking agenda. And all those things that the teacher said, these are the six parameters for agenda that pops up there. And then the supervisor just quickly goes and selects those parameters. 
That's it. As simple. It's a 10 minute observation. It is so simple. This is the kind of observation report that the teacher sees later on. So the teacher sees how she's done on those parameters. What she got, what is a hit, what is a miss. And there is evidence from the classroom. At 1336, this is what. Teacher was asking questions about vacations and then class answered in course. At, at, at 1537, teacher circulated around the classroom. At 1537, 38, you know, 40% of students were talking and discussing, teacher was walking around. You do not see that classroom, but you can build a mental picture of what is happening. Now we also support taking video and photographs of the classroom as well. So the teacher gets so much data to reflect upon, right? Every time you do an observation for a teacher, the teacher gets a badge. The teacher feels happy. She's like, wow, okay, I got a badge. So the more observations I get, the more batches I get, the happier I get. Because you know what? One of the school leaders is coming to my classroom and seeing that I'm doing something well. Because you will not give them something they cannot do. Then there is the post observation meeting. That's a school leader or a coach talking to a teacher. And when this discussion happens, the coach is using the data on top. Yeah, the data on top here, right? So the discussion is very, very personalized for that teacher. And there's specific evidence given, and that's how you coach the teacher. Okay? Automatically after that, as a principal or as a supervisor, these are the reports that you can see. You immediately see in your whole school how does your te how are your teachers performing across the different strategies? Just like a timetable. So if a new if a new gentleman joins the school, hi, welcome to our school, first day in school. I'm so happy that you're here. You are teacher one, okay? You're teacher one. All right, you're that teacher. You are Amita, who's an expert in circulation and data. All right, here. All right, let's do a demo right now. So you're teacher one, and I'm saying, welcome to our school. I'm so happy that you're here. I want you to know that we have the best teachers in this area. I want you to go and meet Amita this week and learn circulation and radar from her. Circulation and radar from her. So yeah, yeah, okay. just walk up to her and say hi. Hi. Ooh, she's already smiling. She's like, <laughs> that never happened, right? So you you were asking something. You suddenly came to you and said something, right? 